platform product. And to begin, I'm going to talk about the product's aims and objectives um, and the client and audience needs. Now, my product will be designed to act as either act as a standalone or an aid to a guided tour. And it will it will provide users with interest about points of interest within it'll so again, it will provide users with information about certain points of interest within the cathedral, such as the, um, the piece of art you just saw, and things like that. Ideally without any other human assistance, but it can be used alongside other guided tours. And um, this allows um, visitors to cathedrals to gain the same level of information as the guided tours offer, without having to um, actually attend them, because they're arranged guided tours and not everyone can always match those arrangements and turn up at the appropriate times. Now this product was asked for by the Dean of the Chichester Cathedral and he's one who welcomes people from all walks of life into the cathedral which then makes the target audience very very broad. There are foreign visitors and regular visitors and obviously newcomers. The foreign visitors are generally commonly aged between about 12 and 18 because they had visits on school trips and that sort of thing. And um, they, um, they tend to, this audience generally is sort of more in touch with technology and uh, they often engage in activities such as video games, going on the internet um, and being on social networking sites, that sort of thing. However, the, the regular visitors are often of a much older, gen, older generation and commonly, not always, this area of the audience isn't as in touch with using technology, so it's going to be, I'll explain how I try and work that into both areas. Um, it'll also be done all according to a production schedule in order to make sure it's all done on time, and for that you can see um, figures 1 to 2.3 within the appendix on the seminar pages. Now, before I can actually begin to decide what platforms I used, I went into research into each areas and assessed their advantages and disadvantages, beginning with QR codes. Now, QR codes are where you have this image here, an image of that and you scan it using possibly an app on your phone or something like that and it'll take you to the user's website <coughs> and the example used here is a BBC website and it takes you to a specific mobile website that which is much simpler than um, computer website designs and you can browse all of the same sections that are available on the website um, However, um, QR codes don't offer the ability to display the information directly. You have to go through the addition of sort of opening up the app, scanning, and then going back through to the website, which can cause a bit of sort of hassle, which makes people less likely to do it. Um, but um, places such as um, Gibraltar have already begun using QR codes in um, popular tourist attractions and things like that so that people can scan them and look at more information. So it's already being used in other places successfully. Just another addition. Now apps. Um, where am I? Well this is an example of um, an app being used. Um, it's much different from a website. It's much more well, they have the option of being much more picture based. Um, it, and this is um, an app developed by Liverpool Cathedral, which allows the users to have a look at uh, things like news, events, options like that being available at the cathedral. But the disadvantage of apps is that if they're only available, if they are available on the App Store, there is a possibility that people will go to the app 
and just look at the tour on the app and then not visit the cathedral themselves and then donate money uh, which then funds the cathedral to then do have more projects like this. But the advantages of apps is that they don't necessarily need an internet connection and one problem with websites which I did found out, find out is that if you're looking at a website on your mobile sometimes it doesn't always load especially if there's if people are on the cathedral's Wi-Fi and there's an awful lot of people for example kids from a tour using it at once it could potentially slow it down websites are the most common um, way of finding out information about a particular place and this could potentially fit in more with the the older generation of the audience because it's something they might possibly use more than their apps on their smartphones and that sort of thing. Um, and another advantage of the website from having a website as a tour is that those with physical disabilities who might not be able to attend the, to the cathedral can still look, um, observe it and go around and take the tour for themselves. Um, without having to miss out on certain parts. Um, websites can also be very easily updated, much more easily than um, other things, uh, RFID tags, which is the next one I'm going to talk about. Um, but um, what's it saying? Yeah. The last one I looked at was RFID tags, which are something which is, if it was built in with the cathedral, it would be something that was only available within the cathedral, which would encourage visitors to go there. Um, and the tags themselves are quite cheap and can be easily reprogrammed and replaced. But however, the, the scanners are quite expensive, and if users are going around using scanners to scan things up and display information on the screen, it's quite likely that they'll get dropped at some point and broken, which means that could potentially end up, the cathedral could potentially spend more money replacing broken scanners than they would gain of people visiting the cathedral and donating money towards them. And they're also, as displayed here, they're commonly used for scanning um, things like uh, people logging in somewhere or products and then that information is generally sent to a database. They're not commonly used for um, displaying images or anything like that so people might not be sure on how to use them and they might get a bit confused, especially the um, older generation of the target audience. I went through three potential ideas. Um, the first was a mobile app, which could be downloadable through the cathedral's Wi-Fi, meaning that people would have to visit the cathedral and also download it and then use it. Uh, a website triggered by a QR code, um, so people would go around the cathedral and there would be particular QR codes placed in certain places, and they could scan that and it would take them to a page of information about that particular point in the cathedral. And the last idea was uh, touch screens that would act as an app, but it wouldn't be downloadable. So you would have to um, go up, go visit the cathedral and then use the screens that would be physically placed. <coughs> uh, it's a similar sort of thing that's done in the Natural History Museum. They've got little sort of games that kids can go around and play and that sort of thing. Um, but my final idea that I chose um, was the QR code trigger mechanism. Now this is mainly uh, aimed towards the, um, the foreign visitors because um, when if, if the idea is that you would have placed QR codes at certain points and you would have, for example, three separate ones that would take you to uh, a French website or 
a, a Spanish website, that sort of thing. So they could go there, see their language displayed, and scan that bit directly, which would take them directly to the information without having to get confused between any other aspects of the website or anything like that. And um, QR codes potentially could be the, one of the simpler options for the older generation. Um, and if um, people who are just visiting the website don't have the option of getting information directly, they have to go through different points on the website, which, and it's actually, the idea is that it's easier to use if you visit the cathedral. And this shows um, where points of interest will be placed. You see there's a floor plan of the cathedral there, and those are labelled points um, that the cathedral themselves have as um, you know, particular sort of important parts of the cathedral or things like that. And at these places, there will be those three QR codes placed, which will be well, explained a bit better in um, my sequential narrative that I'll show you in a bit because I, first I have to show similar existing products that I already looked at. Um, first, I looked at the Chichester Cathedral website because in order to keep with their aesthetics, their visual aesthetics, and I figured that would be the best place to look. It's all, it's very clean, it uses very golden colours with just a touch of red writing pretty much throughout the whole site. Um, but uh, one problem I thought with the cathedral website is that it was, to me it was a bit boring. There wasn't much there. Um, but then when I visited the Winchester Cathedral, there's much more, visually, there's much more going on, there's a lot more pictures, there's more videos, that's, and those, those sort of things are things that might <coughs> interest the younger audience much more than just text. And as you can see the differences between the Cathedral website and the Winchester Cathedral, the Winchester Cathedral has, you know, much more, um, many more pictures, moving images, that sort of thing, but, and this is an example of Manchester Cathedral, which to me, when I visited that site, I didn't think I was looking at the cathedral website. It's, although the, the colours do match the Manchester badge, it's, to me, it's too much. It's, the way that the Winchester Cathedral and the Chichester Cathedral work is they take the physical colours of the cathedral and work it into their website. So it's mainly browns with touches of colours <coughs> from the um, stained glass windows, that sort of thing, subtle bits. Whereas the Manchester Cathedral is just red, yellow, and it's not as easy, you don't, I don't, didn't find things as easily as I did on the other websites. And if I'm going to be using a website, that's going to be also going to be on an iPhone. I had to look at um, comparisons between smartphones and iPhones because iPhones being one of the most common, um, <coughs> iPhones and Androids, but they do display differently. Um, and the website I looked at was the Chichester Cathedral website. Just because that doesn't have a mobile option, it's just the website itself. And it's very, uh, it's a bit condensed, but it's still, you can't see the information easily. Although you can zoom in, uh, it's still, it's not easy to read, which isn't accessible. And it's even worse on the Android phone, which doesn't resize it at all. So it's just, it fills up half the screen and you can't read the writing at all. Yeah. I know you can, but it's like for you remember the, the BBC website we saw at the beginning. You didn't need to do anything on that, it was just there. It came up and you could just scroll down and see everything easily. Whereas on that it can be a bit fiddly, for example, for the older audience who are trying to view 
and find the information they want to get to if they have to zoom in and try and scroll around to find the information, it could be a bit harder for them. And this is the sequential narrative that will just, dis it displays how my product is going to work throughout the cathedral. It will have a main QR code at the entrance which will take you to a page of just um, just the main web, main web page where people can um, navigate from there and go around the tour themselves if they wish. But um, at certain points of interest, there will also be other QR codes where you can scan, uh, for example, um, at the back mystery, um, you'd be able to scan and find out more information, for example, when it was built or why. And, that sort of thing and there'll be options for the different languages so rather than them having to go through different parts maybe on the English website or getting confused that way they can just scan their own language and it'll take them to that page so that they can immediately just learn about the cathedral. Um, oh dear. examples of it. Um, I have two main images at the side com combining with um, this particular one is a section of the cathedral um, design. I don't know why it's not playing so I'll just skip to the final designs. <laughs> colour scheme. Um, to begin with I'll just explain how it works. This is the first, you go to the cathedral and this will be the first QR code that you scan and this is what will appear. The same with the website at home. And it will have options for four sections which um, will have information lists of points of interest within that section which um, you can then go to but after peer review it this was sort of, it was decided that it was a bit too red, really, was the main comment that came back. So, it was changed very slightly just to add in a little bit of, a um, little bit more of a dark brown, because that was some of the colours used around the cathedral. And um, once you click on one of the sections, it will take you to First I have this design where it will have a map of the section at the bottom and numbered points of interest and then you can then click on one of those and it'll, it'll take you to information of that page. But um, with regards to my comments about the Chichester Cathedral website, it wasn't, I didn't feel it was visual enough, there wasn't much visual appeal. So I changed it to involve like that so that it would have images of the points of interest instead of just a list so that people can see what they're looking at and go, ah, that's what I want. And then the same will happen on the point of interest information page. It'll have a little map in the corner highlighted where you are and um, a, another image to make sure that you know what you're looking at and you know that it's the correct page that you're on, especially for the foreign visitors because they might not understand as much. And that's it. Thanks, Venetia. <coughs> yeah, it's a very thorough presentation. Is there any comments very quickly because we're out of time? Okay, but is there anything that that, that could maybe help Venetia to progress? Perhaps. 
I can think of two elements. Ben? The physical nature of QR codes, where are you going to put them inside the oh, cathedral? Oh, yes. Um, Is there any information on that? Yeah. Um, they will be placed on green translucent perspex stands. Um, so it will, it won't, they won't be engraved on anything, they won't interrupt the cathedral, they can be removed if necessary. Yeah, so they're not going to damage the cathedral. So not to it, is it? No, and it's, uh, they'll cost about £1,830, I think. If you were to ATP. implement, if you were to implement the whole... Yes, the whole with those spares. Okay. Obviously I don't expect you to spend that no. amount. You're only asked to demonstrate maybe two or three. That's alright. Okay, are there anything else? Uh, any any other questions or comments about Venetia's uh, vision, so to speak? No. I was just very quickly as part of the website. Will there be um, an audio narrative somewhere? Uh, yes. Um, on each um, point of interest page. There, I can put in an option, um, for example, like just a little speaker that someone can press if they want to hear the audio. So it's optional, you don't have to hear it. Okay, so that, right. That's working on the, on the assumption that if you do have um, uh, blind or partially blind uh, tourists, yeah. uh, visitors, they usually Usually, uh, if the cathedral don't lay on some kind of support, they're, they're usually accompanied, I guess, with with a carer or someone yeah. to help them trigger those those things. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is the obviously you've given me an indication of financial uh, implications. Yeah. Um, the QR codes themselves are, mm. don't actually cost anything to produce, do they? No. Well, the only thing that will cost in terms of the QR codes is just printing them onto a piece of paper. Right. Okay. That's it. And is there any particular requirement that what what substrate, what paper it needs to be printed on, or um, or, the, or can it still be read through your? It can still be read through the perspex glass because it's it's transparent, right. so it can still be able to be seen. I'm just thinking about the reflection, you know. The, yeah. Does, does that? Mean, I don't know. Does it? Um, generally does it not, because it's all. It depends on where lights are placed and things like that. Right, and, okay. they, and obviously, um, they wouldn't be placed in places that would um, be affected by the stained glass windows and that sort of thing. Okay, because in the cathedral there are a lot of spot up spotlights and down spotlights. And yeah. All that and the other. So you've got to be strategic about where you place. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Anyone else? I've got a, a little question. If, I, mean, I guess it's, it's the way I would approach a product like this is I kind of properly immerse myself into the history, yeah. the context, um, and find something that you find really exciting. Like, I wish I'd have known yeah. about that. And then maybe that would um, actually trigger the kinds of things that you're going to present and the mm. method and the technology yeah rather than I think your approach was to look really a lot of the technology although yeah. you, con you considered the aesthetics really really well yeah. that's I mean it's more more of a feedback yeah. than a question but yeah yeah that's I do understand maybe that's the next stage yeah the next stage is they, they've got to build it mm. yeah <laughs> Okay, all right, uh, I'll finish up. Luke, do you want to, we are conscious of time because we are